Welcome back. You with on the record. Our guest tonight is the Deputy Secretary General of the African National Congress, <coughs> Jesse Duarte. Uh, Jesse, good evening once again. Let's yes. ha start now with what happened in KwaZulu Natal this week. Mm. The Provincial Executive mm. Committee of the ANC in that province taking the decision mm. to remove the council leaderships in Itaquini and Umsunduzi, so yes. Peter Maritzburg and Durban. The real issue obviously is around Zandile Gomedes, the mayor of Itaquini. Do you believe that was the right decision? We think that what the PEC in, in KZN did was to apply <coughs> the ANC's policies, mm. uh, to look at whether or not the uh, person involved or people involved w had already been charged, which is in the case of, of uh, mm. the mayor and others, yes, they've been charged. And the ANC's resolution says the person ought to step mm. aside mm. Uh, of their own accord. Mm. I think they had a very long meeting and they came to a conclusion that it was in the best interest of the city and the ANC that that happens. So, you know, we can't really fault them on mm. that. There is concern about, uh, generally, about the, the treatment of women in the ANC, mm. uh, where women are treated much more harshly uh, than men are, and, 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 and sometimes it's not the same treatment mm. for the same difficulty, but we believe that what they did in KZN is, is, is what the ANC policy says they need to, to do. Okay, just two things if I can, quickly. I mean, I'll come to the gender issue in a moment, but, yeah. but the ANC in KwaZulu Natal took great pains to say this wasn't, they didn't mention the corruption charges in their yes. statement at all. Yes. They yes. said this was because of problems with service delivery. Mm. Are you saying they should have made it about the corruption charges? Well, I think that whatever their, their decision was, they had a long meeting. We weren't mm. there. They haven't given us a report of their meeting yet. But our understanding is they looked at all the issues that impacted on the city. And that in the, they were of the view that it was in the best interest of the city, as I said, that they should remove uh, the people. And uh, I don't know if that's so wrong. Hmm. If there's a very, good, uh, a very good discussion and it is objective, and it is not intended to create a vacuum for somebody else's faction to take over, then it is the correct thing to do. Um, it would be problematic if there was a suggestion that they did it to replace uh, that leadership mm. with a, a, a different faction, mm. and, and I don't see that. I mm. don't see it like that, and I, I must confess it happened yesterday, and it, there hasn't been enough time to actually study their report, which we, we probably will only have a look at when they come and brief us on Monday. On one hand, you seem to be saying mm. they did the right thing because someone mm. who is accused or facing formal yeah. charges should step down. Yeah. On the other side, you seem to be saying there is an issue around gender concerns. And Badabilet Lamini, the leader yes. of the ANC Women's League, I mean, yes. was quoted as saying that mm. if the ANC keeps doing this, they'll form a women's only <laughs> party. I don't think she meant that. I'd, you know, uh, Badabilet Lamini is is as true ANC as anybody I know, mm. and I've known her uh, mm. for many, many mm. years. But I do think there is concern at the moment uh, in the, amongst women in the ANC that there seems to be an unfairness mm. in the treatment of men who have the same mm. accusations as women are treated differently. Mm. Everybody should be treated the same. Mm. If you have a problem, treat it uh, the, 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 the remedy must be the same across the board. We need justice in our country and also in the ANC. So more people who are charged with wrongdoing should step down? They should. That's the policy. Okay. If you're charged. One of the burning issues of the moment is around the public protector, Advocate yes. Busasiu Mkwebani. Now, mm -hmm. um, she's been conducting the investigation into mm -hmm. President Ramaphosa's CR17 campaign. She says sure. the president misled parliament. Yes. Today, the High Court in Pretoria issued a personal costs order for her and her yeah. conduct in the Freda Dairy Farm case at Estina. Mm -hmm. There's a constitutional court finding that she lied under oath to a court. Yeah. It's a very serious finding, mm -hmm. I think, for mm -hmm. the head of a Chapter 9 mm -hmm. institution. Should mm -hmm. she leave office? I think all those matters need to go to parliament mm -hmm. for proper processing. Mm. Um, I believe that, first of all, let, us, let me just say that the ANC believes we need to respect the office mm. of the public protector. And to some extent, the kind of um, attacks on her have been quite virulent, despite the fact that the Constitution mm. demands a different conduct from all mm. of us. But she, in, in the view of many of us in the ANC, is she was doing what the public protector was asked to do through a complaint. How she managed it, we may disagree with her, mm. but she did what every other public protector did. And I think, uh, Stephen, this might uh, annoy you, but I'm going to say it. Mm. I think that uh, the previous public protector did exactly the same. 
uh, as she's she's mm. doing. But we liked her because uh, she did it against uh, somebody the media didn't mm. very, very much like. What we need to do now is calm down. There's a review process. The president has every mm. right to review mm. any finding that the public protector makes. Any person has mm. that right. And her finding, uh, according to the court, can only be imp can is is we must implement mm. it except if there is a court ruling against the implementation. So there, there needed to be a bit of a calmness. Mm. On, the, on her issues and the, the constitutional court matter, that matter has to go to Parliament for proper processing. Sure, but lying mm. under oath, I mean, you are allowed a it's personal a, view. I mean, she lied well, under oath to a court according to the constitutional court. I think that's court. A, it's a difficulty. Mm. And, but my view is, let us take it to Parliament. Parliament is where her issues ought to be. It shouldn't be that every single day... Come on, that's not how power ad, works. It does. <laughs> the ANC I mean, caucus ad, will decide advocate, what happens. Advocate Mkwebani is um, basically being thrown under the bus mm all the time, every single minute of every day. What we need to do is to say, where she's done things that are really unacceptable and wrong, let's deal with that. Where she's done things, her, her, her tasks come from the Constitution. Mm. And I would be more worried if the public protector in future begins to say, I'm not going to do what the Constitution instructs me to do. I would be more worried about that, really. And we need to not think short term. We need to think a long term from now, Stephen. What, what's going to happen every time a public protector mm. challenges, um, has to mm. challenge, uh, has to have a finding that is not favorable? What will we always... I think review is right. But why has this review process become something that everybody everybody mm. is mm. is is getting involved in this is a matter between the president who is reviewing a finding and the public protector the difference between this public protector and the mm. previous one and i accept mm. what you say about the media i mean the media yes. is the media and i know you have strong views on it yes i do <laughs> <laughs> but but that public protector was never found guilty of lying under oath by the constitutional court that. this is incredibly serious yes. would the claim not be would the argument mm. not be that someone cannot actually hold that position mm -hmm. if they've lied under oath. They're I, simply not fit and proper to be I public think, protected. I think you'd like me to say what you're saying, but I'm not going to fall you, into you, that You trap. disagreeing with me is a better headline. I, I am going to go into the fact of the matter and say that there is that matter. It is problematic. It needs to be dealt with at the level of, the, uh, parlia uh, of parliament, at the portfolio committee and on the floor. If the, when the Portfolio Committee puts their um, findings uh, properly mm -hmm. and well, well balanced findings to, to, the, to Parliament. Um, the whole issue around the CR17 campaign yes. which she investigated mm -hmm. led to all of this information. Mm -hmm. uh, hullabaloo is an interesting word to use here perhaps. Yes. Um, the ANC, and, and I sort of want to get you on the record of saying this, the ANC strongly supports President Ramaphosa through yes, all of this. of course. No concerns. We, 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 we believe that it is unfair to pick on the president of the ANC on a matter that is really a general knowledge mm. matter that every political party leader is doing. Um, and we believe that there ought not to be a creation of a crisis around this issue. What we want to do in the ANC is to regulate internal uh, party campaigns as well as money in the ANC, which is a concern for us. But we support our president as we and we, it is unreasonable to think that we wouldn't. We, we will support any president of the ANC because, frankly speaking, uh, Stephen, whether we like it or not, an attack on the president of the ANC is an attack on the ANC. It's, it's as, for us, it's as, as uh, fundamental as that. Let me try and get away from the main politics at the moment. I mean, that's not possible. <laughs> you want to go on the side road? <laughs> no. I want to talk about... It. Uh, Professor Stephen Friedman, who you know, described it yes. very well the other day. Yes. We're in a moment of national gloom. Yes. Um, I'm talking about yes. rising unemployment. The idea that for yes. most people, lived experience day to day is getting worse. Absolutely. I would say, personally, I, I feel that there's often a loss of hope among mm. many South Africans. Mm. And I think that's very, very sure. scary yeah. and very, very tragic. Yeah. Um, Part of this is around economic policy. I don't want to get into an economic policy argument with you, yeah. but the ANC has battled, I think, sometimes to create an economic mm. policy. Mm. I understand why that is structurally. Mm. It's a broad church movement. You're representing many different constituencies. Mm. But at the moment, it seems that life is getting worse for many people in yes, South Africa. It is. Do you have any reason to believe that life is going to get better? Stephen, I think that we're going to go through some more, some difficult times. The world economy is shrinking. 
uh, the trade wars between Donald Trump and mm. the Chinese don't help the rand. Uh, so I think there, there are those difficulties. Mm. But I would like to suggest that the imposition of a narrative that says we're almost on our way to the IMF yeah. is a bit far-fetched. Mm. Because I don't, none of the people who are the experts are saying that. Mm. And uh, the governor of the Reserve Bank is not saying that. The minister of finance is not saying that. The serious economists are not saying that. What top of mind for the ANC right now, and that's really what we're discussing, mm -hmm. is what ought we to do immediately to bring about secure investments into our country? Uh, what ought we to do that will give comfort to rating agencies? And of course, the issue around ESCOM is a very topical issue within the ANC. Uh, what to do? We're not going to tell you what those discussions are. We believe that when the president is ready, uh, hopefully in a week or mm. two, he will bring together w the discussions that have been held with all of us. That is a very serious matter for us. Uh, you know, our, uh, the debt our country has is, is very serious. But what we do know is that people really are struggling, and our constituency is the poorest of the mm. poor, are the people who are truthfully really struggling. And thank goodness for the social net that mm. we've introduced. Because if there weren't the grants, many people would simply not be able to cope. Um, but that is it. Top of mind is the economy. We, we don't discuss anything mm. else. We, we're literally saying everybody, all hands on deck, talk to investors, bring investors back to the country, calm the situation down at home. So it is worrying to us when there's looting. It is worrying to us when foreign nationals are, are a, attacked or are accused mm. unfairly and unjustly of, 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 having, mm. of selling goods mm. in the streets. We need to calm that down, but we also need to bring investments. And you know the notion of Team South Africa mm. hasn't caught on mm. yet. And we're hoping that uh, we can bring many more people to the table to be part of the Team South Africa process. Jesse Duarte, thank you very much indeed. Thank the you. Deputy Secretary General of the African National Congress with On the Record. Thank you.